I will remember you. Will you remember me? Don't let your life pass you by. Weep not for the memories. This this freaking show, man. <laughs> what? What's the problem? The video's not playing. <laughs> Jeez. All right. Well, that didn't work the way I wanted it to. Hello, That's Canucks fans. My name's David Shirley. I'm joined, as always, by the man who built the place, Chris Faber. Yeah, and I'm joined by the guy who's breaking down the whole damn place. Our here. technical producer. This is why producer. you don't do the show prep. It didn't. Nothing works when you do. The well, show I did prep. the show prep. I put it in the outline. I forgot to mention it to Aaron until a minute before air. All uh, of the show prep that you did was a video that didn't work. And now you're well, yelling the at video poor Aaron over there. Uh, whatever. You told Aaron a second before we went did. to air. By the I way, did. open up with this video. What's Aaron doing over there? Working his ass off. Yeah. And well, you try, I, and you try okay, well, I put it. I put it in the outline. I understand if you don't read the outline. I'm like that too, Aaron. Don't worry. Uh, our technical producer is Aaron Bordado. Um, and he's pissed. <laughs> yeah, and he's pissed. <laughs> and he should <laughs> yeah. Um. Yes. Okay, so that didn't uh, work the way I wanted it to. Not but I, I don't know. I thought it was nice. We're... um. Oh, good. It worked. The video worked. Okay, perfect. The video worked. Wait, no, it didn't. What are we doing here? I don't know. Anyways, uh, Zephyr Epic is the presenting sponsor of this show for now. Uh, you can use promo code Hockey Season, capital H, capital S, all one word, Hockey Season. That will get you $5 off your order at Zephyr Epic. If you choose to shop online, that is at ZephyrEpic.com. That is Z-E-P-H-Y-R, Epic. Check them out on all platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, Instagram, whatever it is. There we go. They've got you covered for all of your trading card needs. Chris, what were your trading card needs today? My trading card needs were uh, Cole Harbor Zone, Sidney Crosby, clear cut uh, dominance card. Ooh. That's a cool one. Whichever, and by the way, oh, I can't turn my camera, but if you got kids and they like hockey cards, get in our DMs. I have the quads. You can see the stack right you there. You do. You got a stack. This thing, I, I, I don't have much more room. I need to give these cards away to a child. So if you have kids listening to the show, if you're in the car, if you're a kid in the back seat, start yelling at mom and dad oh, from wow. the back seat. Wow. Start yelling at your parents. No. Say DM Chris, DM Quads, Instagram, Twitter, whatever. Shoot don't me a yell DM. At your, yell, at your yell at your parents. parents. Yell at your parents right now and tell them that uh, you would like the hockey cards. We'll come out and get them to you. We'll come out and drive them out there if you're in the Coquitlam area. Quads has got you. Yeah, if you're, if you're in the if Coquitlam area, I'll anywhere else, as well. I will drive them to you. <laughs> Coquitlam, North Burnaby. I do North Burnaby deliveries. Well, I got to get the car in, too. I'm going in on Thursday. You've then. told me about this. Okay, so Zephyr Epic. Check them out. Resale location in Surrey as well. If you choose to shop online, free shipping Canada-wide on any order over $50. What I was trying to do off the top was a little tribute for our good pal. See, that's the thing. Jack People Rathbone. on the podcast are listening, and they're like, what the hell? People know Jack Rathbone got traded. No, but you just started singing. That's what people are going to get at the top. Spotify is going to cancel that, too. Actually, you know what? Because I was so close. You just admitted. I basically sounded like Sarah McLaughlin. Yeah. Yeah. Get it Get it right. So you you're, you admitted that I basically sounded like her. So much so that Spotify would n- nip it in the butt. In the bud. Not butt. It's not butt? No, it's bud. What's the bud? The bud of like a, when you're cutting a plant. Oh. Nip it in the bud. I guess you don't, nipping is in the nip butt. it in the <laughs> anyways. All right. Uh Jack Rathman gets traded. Yeah. The trade coming down early, or excuse me, late Tuesday morning. I don't know if we have the full trade. Um, but Mark Friedman and Ty Glover coming back to the Vancouver Canucks with Jack Rathbone and Lil Plus. That's the other part we haven't talked about this. Lil Plus, your guy. Lil Plas, yeah. Yeah, Lil Plas. Carol Plastic played going back his, the other way. Played with his dad in the Czechia League. Lil, uh, Carol Plastic did. Played with his father, Carol Plastic Sr. They had the jerseys. Carol Plastic Jr., Carol Plastic Sr. They played with his dad. Before LeBron and Bronny, you got... The Plazas did it the first. The Uh But hey, they get Mark Friedman, right shot defense from coming back. He's got 65 NHL games played. Ty Glover, little Canucks connection quads. I told you this before the show. Played a season with Max Sassone. At Western Michigan, the uh, the uh, the Mustangs over there, good good club. They got her, they had a best line in NCAA last year. Max Sasson was centering it. Sasson played a season with Glover. Glover, I know everyone's talking about Mark Friedman, like a you know right shot guy, third round pick, played sixty five games last season. Ty Glover is six foot three, two hundred plus pounds. This guy's going to come to the AHL and uh, 
I think he's going to help a little bit. He's going to help that fourth line. And Plastic didn't look like like this. Just feels like a trade where, like I don't know what was going on in Pittsburgh to make this trade a thing that had to happen. But I knew that Jack Rathbone wasn't going to be getting NHL games for any time in the near future. Here you have Akito Hirose, you got Christian Wallanen. These guys are just ahead of Rathbone. He was basically like the third left shot defenseman call up option. Heck, they might have called up Jet Wu first. He plays on the left side as well. Rathbone just wasn't going to get the ice time in Vancouver. This feels like they're doing him a little bit of a favor, moving him over to Pittsburgh. Surprise, surprise. Uh, Carol Plastic as well. He wasn't going to be a starting, uh, a guy that was really going to get into the lineup easily for uh, for the Abbotsford Canucks. But what we did see was a signing of Dimitri Zlodiev yesterday. This opens up a little bit of a clear pass for, for Zlody have to get into the lineup a little bit because they still got Josh Bloom as well, right? Josh Bloom didn't play any games over the weekend for the odds for Canucks. Um, so moving Carol Plastic should open up a little bit of a spot, but I guess it kind of fills it with Ty Glover as well. So we'll have to see what the big uh, Glover kid can do. Mark Friedman, he fought, uh, fought Brady Kachuk last year. Didn't go too well. Didn't go. I mean, didn't go great. <laughs> I was looking at, uh, I was trying to get some photos for the article today. Of, uh, of Mark Friedman. There's one of him with like Brady Kachuk right on top. But he, you know, Talkett said it today. He's a little bit of a pest, right? I like that. You're adding the right shot defenseman who can play like a little bit of a pest. And if you're willing, like, yeah, they, the fight didn't go great with Brady Kachuk. You're if willing. It, Kyle Burroughs has gotten his butt beat a few listen, times. Man, or his bud beat a few times. No, butt is was the correct one there. He's five inches shorter than this guy. He's losing like 40 pounds on yeah. him. It'd be like you and me dropping him quads. Remember that Patreon idea we had? Where you were like, all right, we should do a boxing match, but you have your dominant hand tied behind your back and you're blindfolded. Yeah. And I said, no. <laughs> no. I said, no chance. No, that was, uh... um, okay. So, a couple things. This guy, Friedman, you looked at the trade response on Twitter from the Pittsburgh Penguins fans, and people were upset about it. People yeah. were saying things like, why are we getting rid of this guy? Why did Mike Sullivan not play this guy? He's a little undersized at 5'11, can play both sides. Uh, he does remind me a lot of like an Alex Biega, Kyle Burroughs. He's coming in as a seventh, sixth option, but they've got Noah Juleson, who I would say is like a seventh, eighth, ninth option. And he's playing in your top six defense group. So I like this trade for the Canucks. It improves their defensive depth. I think we're going to see Friedman immediately in the lineup. I think he's going to play over guys like Juleson, like Hirose. Um He is going to join the Vancouver Canucks yes. on the road. Uh, Dollywall right? had that. Dollywall had that on his show. Speaking of Dollywall. Is it time to crack it open? You saw me taking the uh, paper off it Listen, here. Listen, man, your energy over the last couple of days, I don't know if you need any. What's wrong stuff. with that? What's wrong with having high energy? Maybe it'll help you chill out a little bit. We'll get you some uh, on the rocks. You know, I got those big ice cubes in this house, right? You That's see right. My, my big, huge ice cubes? That's the good stuff right there. Uh, but yeah, and Karan said it. Is this the Burroughs replacement? Yeah, I I think so. I wouldn't say to the level of like, Listen, I'm going to drop the gloves with everyone, but I also don't know so much about Friedman. I'll be 100% honest. I, I just know that is Jay Kyle Fresh Burrows card looks cool? Sure, Jay Fresh card looks good. We got his hockey vis in here as well if we want to get that up, Aaron. Looks like he's solid defensively from some of the analytics, but hey, we're not diving into the tape just yet. Uh, we got a game today at 3 o'clock that we're going to get to uh, and chat a little bit more about that with Jeff Patterson, who's joining us just in a few minutes here. So that's nice. We'll have Jay Pat on the show to chat about the trade as well as preview the game because we don't do this often on the show, Quads. We'll do it for a couple of like Eastern time zone games, but a little bit of a preview show today. The so, game is going to start. The game starts in like less than two hours. Correct. I don't even know if I'm going to be home for the start of this game. You won't be because you always linger around here in this apartment and start making mac and cheese. Make and, the crown corner. Yeah, the crown corner. People over. like my crown corner. More and more people are saying it. Yeah. Yeah. In the chat, people like the crown corner. No, but I, I really think that like we talked about with Jack Rathbone for a long time of like, hey, the, the fit just doesn't feel like it's going to be a path for him to the NHL here. This is something you and I discussed on the show and, and off the air as well. The fact that they could move him out for, I guess you could say like a similar type player, a guy who's got some NHL experience. He's been around the NHL a little bit as well. You could say Friedman's had a little bit more NHL experience just from his time. He was drafted in what, 2014, I believe. So he's been around the league for a little bit longer than Rathbone was, who was drafted in 2017, I believe the Patterson draft. Mm -hmm. But they get a right shot guy here, and I like this because let's let's talk about the weakest part. And I hate to single him out here because he's a good good guy, but to single out the the worst part of the Vancouver Canucks entire lineup. What is it, quads? Right now, the Vancouver Canucks. What's the worst part of their lineup? I would say the bottom of their. I would say the right group. shot defenseman on the yeah. third pairing, well, and this at least can give a little bit of internal competition. I'm not saying that Friedman is the answer to everything, 
on the third pairing, but it helps out a little bit of depth. And maybe he's a guy who like slides in as a seventh, like seventh defenseman later on in the season when they get a little bit healthier. Mm-hmm. Susie gets back in the lineup and then, Hey, maybe he is a guy that the coach likes. Like maybe he is a player who's willing to drop the gloves with a lot of guys. Maybe he is a player who's, you know, hard to play against defensively. We can see from his hockey biz there. The guy shows pretty well defensively. I know he's only got 65 games. It's not the biggest sample size yet. He's got a minus 10% there on the expected goals. That's that's impressive. Doesn't bring a lot in the offense. His own minus 4% on that one as well. But defensively, at least, you're like, okay. He's going to do something and be capable. And this is in a third line role as well. So I just don't think, uh, I don't think the Canucks lost this trade. But I also don't think the Pittsburgh Penguins lost this trade because Jack Rathbone is younger and he has more upside and he can really shoot the puck. Like that is something you can't knock about Rathbone at all. He can really rip the puck. There's a lot offensively that he can do well. It's about him being able to do that at the NHL level. We see him in the AHL. I was just talking about him over the weekend. I said Jack Rathbone might have been the best defenseman for the outs for Canucks. That tweet is the reason the Pittsburgh Penguins were interested. So I love it. You're welcome, Alvin. Okay, so... Uh, We have Jeff Patterson standing by. I want to quickly introduce the poll question because I want to get Jeff's take on it. But we'll start with the poll question here. Okay, so our Atlas Goods poll question, as always, brought to you by the great folks over at Atlas Goods. Go to atlasgds.com. Use promo code CC15 for 15% off your first order of pop rinds. These are the best fresh pork rinds straight from your microwave or air fryer. Low carb, high protein. What's not to like? Locally owned and operated out of Surrey, British columbia go check it out okay our poll question today through two games what feels the most sustainable our options are structure goaltending goal scoring and as always i'm angry so far 63 percent of voters saying the structure of this team feels the most sustainable 21 percent say it's the goaltending 10 percent say it's the goal scoring and six percent say they are angry and with that Let's bring in the man himself. It's time to get some ponderings from Jeff Patterson. Jeff, uh, I'll throw you the poll question at you first. What's the most sustainable thing about this team? Give us your ponderings. Uh, Yeah, I mean, of the options you've got there, without a doubt, goaltending. I know 62% are saying structure, they're wrong. Uh, Look, they got out uh, attempted 88-33 the other night in Edmonton. like, And that was the Oilers, and a lot of it was power play. Uh, That was all situation numbers. But the structure was lacking at times there. They were holding on for dear life. So uh, there's every reason to believe the goaltending is sustainable all season long. Like Thatcher Demko has looked good through training camp in the preseason and uh, the part of the one game that he played. I'm looking forward to seeing him get back in there against the Flyers. But Casey DeSmith has been terrific, like maybe better than terrific. Uh, you tell me what's the next word up from terrific uh, in his time though, like both the preseason games, the game in Edmonton, the game in Seattle or sorry, in, out in Abbotsford against Seattle. And then uh, when he was pressed into duty the other night, like Casey DeSmith has given the Canucks absolutely everything that they would have expected from a backup goaltender. And that's what he is. I mean, he's got a track record of producing at the NHL level where a guy like Spencer Martin and Colin Delia, they were tweeners and it had their looks, but uh, I think there's, without a doubt, DeSmith's an upgrade at that position. So I, for me, in the early going here, I, I would say goaltending is the answer to that poll question. Jeff, let's get your thoughts on the Jack Rathbone trade. They bring in a right shot defenseman with 65 NHL games. He's a little bit older than Rathbone, but it feels like, uh, and I just kind of said it here on the show, doesn't feel like a bad trade for either team. Kind of feels like a fine trade for either team. Anything to add uh, from what we said earlier in the show about this trade that came down a little bit earlier today? Yeah, I mean, the third pair right side for the Canucks. So we know that Noah Juleson has had opportunities and hasn't done an awful lot with them. And I used the word tweener when I was talking about goaltenders. That's kind of what Noah Juleson has become as a professional. And, you know, that's not to say that he can't give the Canucks some some moments and some spot duty along the way. But it's Patrick Galvin's job to upgrade at every position if he has the opportunity. And I think he thinks he has done that. We'll see. I mean, Mark Friedman... Uh, has never stuck in the National Hockey League, but from talking to people in Pittsburgh, uh, apparently high character quality guy, uh, you know, has a bit of a ruggedness to him that the Canucks certainly, uh, not that Juleson doesn't, but uh, I think that that's uh, maybe an area that, you know, Freeman can carve out if he gets an opportunity with the Canucks is to, to play physically and, and bring a little bit of added muscle there. Uh, let me just say, first and foremost, that like Jack Rathbone's an A1 human being. Pittsburgh's awesome. getting a really good person. People know that in Vancouver. Uh, but I just want to, my dealings with him have always been terrific. Uh, 
you know, it, look, he was a fourth round draft pick. And I think this is just a reminder in favor. I know like you love covering your prospects and that's great. Uh, there's interest in players beneath the NHL, but it's a reminder that fourth round picks are absolute lottery tickets. And, uh, you know, that's not a knock on Jack Rathbone. It's just he was drafted in the fourth round because there were warts on his game then. And it was always going to be him to sort of rise above and overcome. And, you know, the taxi squad COVID year certainly didn't help his development. That was a tough situation for him. Uh, never a knock on his offensive gifts. The guys, I mean, I love watching him skate. But he was always in tough as an undersized left side guy when you have Quinn Hughes here. And certainly with Rick Tockett, we knew that, you know, the idea of having two undersized guys, it was kind of like having Garland and Hoaglander on the same line. You know, that was likely never to happen under Rick Tockett. Same with Jack Rathbone. He was always going to be in tough. And then they went out and they bring in a Matt Irwin. Uh, we saw Guillaume Brisebois in the camp he had. And Rathbone fell pretty rapidly down the depth chart. So I'm happy for him that he gets the change of scenery, that it sounds like he was promised if he didn't make the team out of camp, and that he he probably deserves. Whether he makes it in Pittsburgh, that's going to be up to him and the path that he has in front of him. Uh, again, he can play professionally. We've seen that at the AHL level. But at the NHL level, there were and there remain issues around his defending. And so we'll see. But he's also 24. And like, let's just be honest, the runway gets pretty short when you get to your mid-20s if you're going to stick and play regularly in the National Hockey League. Jeff, through two games, who's exceeded your expectations the most? Maybe not impressed you the most, but who's exceeded your expectations for them the most? Well, Brock Besser. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I didn't didn't have him. I didn't have him down for four goals on opening night. Um, and look, that was a great story. And I love the fact that he picked up the assist on the Hoaglander goal the other night. Hoaglander's a guy. I, I, again, you know that final preseason game, he was the odd man out up front, and you just didn't know. And Teddy Bluger gets hurt, and so there's an opportunity for him, and he has made the most of it. And in limited ice time, like let's not make a mistake here. Nils Hoaglander's not playing 20 minutes a night, but I'm a guy that believes if you're in uniform. Uh, if you get eight minutes or 20 minutes, you have a chance to rise above. And I think he's done that, not just with the offense, but I love the fact that he was out there with four minutes to go and a 4-3 lead for the Canucks. And there's Nils Hoaglander. He's playing, and guys like Garland and Kuzmenko and, and others, you know, they were they were parked in the third period. Rick Tockett shortened his bench, as a lot of coaches would. And the fact that Nils Hoaglander was getting late shifts, I think, uh, speaks volumes about, you know, the trust and the confidence that the coach is finding in him now uh it's going to be an ongoing process obviously but uh yeah i would say nils hoaglander certainly and then you know some of these guys that were brought in uh you know very quietly like uh, ian cole's going about his business doing his thing when we talk about uh, structure and stability you know that's what he's going to bring to this group he's never going to be flashy but logging bigger minutes i guess than i thought now some of that again was how much penalty killing they had to do against the oilers the other night and then Look, I, I'm not sure where I read. There was a column somewhere about JT Miller that uh, no, <laughs> I won't go down that road. But uh, I think Miller, you know, he showed on Saturday. Like we all raved about it, shutting down McDavid on opening night and getting his four points. I, I, again, the thrust of my column was that he didn't find the score sheet on Saturday. But in moments, the hit on Dreisaitl in the first period that just sort of seemed to announce his arrival of the game and sort of a message to, I think, both benches that like the Canucks – even though they looked like they were going to get run out of the rank in the first five minutes, Miller was there to say, no, like, you know, we're into this game now. And sure enough, they got a power play, they score on it and then uh, add another one. So they get out of the first period, up a goal. And then uh, the five on three penalty kill. I mean, Ben, but don't break ultimately. And JT Miller is sort of taking on some of these other duties that help the team. I mean, this is going to be something that we're all going to watch all season. You know, can he handle a matchup role? There are a lot of good players in the National Hockey League. It's not just McDavid and Dreisaitl. So his utilization and on those nights when he's not uh, figuring in the scoring, you know, is he finding ways to contribute? And I just love that second period when they had all those penalties, the spring of penalties. Like there was no attitude for Miller. You didn't see him complaining to the referees. You didn't seem exasperated. He wasn't whacking the back of the net uh, out of frustration. It was just like, all right, suck it up. Here we go. More penalty killing. Bring it on. And I just, I like the body language, the attitude and everything else from JT Miller the other night. It's not like that Connor Bedard kid smashing his stick into the boards <laughs> on his way to the bench here. JT Miller is a mature guy, but I wanted to follow up with that. And uh, yeah, you can check out Patterson's point over there on, uh, or Ponderings? What is it here? Uh, it is got, point, off but in spirit, it's Ponderings. I, I edited the article and posted <laughs> it for you, so I should know this. Uh, but Jeff, you wrote about it and I was kind of wanted to follow up a little bit about 
I guess just the relationship between a coach and a player like JT Miller, who lives off of so much emotion in the game, and, and it helps him. Helps him a lot of the time when he's playing. I, I think that Rick Talkett, and we've kind of joked about it in the offseason, like maybe he's the JT Miller whisperer or that. But I have to imagine that conversations between, you know, let's say a Bruce Boudreaux and JT Miller and conversations between a Rick Talkett and JT Miller, I have to think that the conversations between a Talkett and Miller are better for Miller's game. So how do you see this relationship kind of growing and Miller being able to do things like you wrote about in your column about doesn't have to just be goals and assists. It's got to be about the all around game and how you are with your mannerisms, how you are on the penalty kill, how you are at five on five in your own zone. If JT Miller can get all those things together, like I think a lot of that's going to come from Rick Tockett being able to preach kind of what went through his career and how he developed as a player as he got older. Yeah. Now there's a couple of things at play. One is, uh, and there's no guarantees because it's pro sports and other injuries might happen. But I want to see what this lineup looks like when Teddy Bluger and Ilya Mikheyev get in there. Because in a perfect world, you don't want JT Miller killing six minutes of penalties on a lot of nights. Like that's Those are hard minutes. That's taxing on him. And another point I made in the column was that you know if the Oilers had scored on the power play and they came close, now it's a tie game. If you're going to win, you need offense. And what would JT Miller have had left in the tank down the stretch and into three on three overtime where, you know, he's been effective in the past. And so uh, I do hope that when Bluger is back, he's taking some of those defensive zone face offs on the penalty kill that Ilya Mikheyev can maybe spell off Miller a little bit. But in their absence, uh, JT Miller was really good in that uh, position the other night. So I think, first and foremost, not that JT didn't respect Bruce Boudreau, but Boudreau played the game at a different time, different era, totally differently than JT Miller, who grew up in the Pittsburgh area watching a guy like Rick Tockett, you know, absolutely just this physical force, this menace, the guy that didn't back down from a single challenge. Like, I just think that buys immediate currency for a player like JT Miller. Like, there's just a ton of respect there for the way that Tockett played and produced. And so I think there's a connection on that level. And Miller's spoken about that. And then also the other thing is that Rick Tockett came in, he identified his leadership group and he's empowered them. How many times has he talked about empowering his leadership group and JT's a part of that. And I think now as a 30 year old, uh, he knows that he's ensconced here, the contract and like, he's going to be a Canuck for a while. I, I think he and Rick Tockett have had some heart to hearts sort of about that and about the need to tone down, like don't take that out of your game entirely. Uh, you know, he wears his heart on his sleeve. His engine's always going here. But I also think that he realized, like, there's probably a bit of a fear factor. Let's be honest. Like, Rick Tockett, you know, he, he's just got that in his blood that if you cross him, well, he's not going <laughs> to drop the gloves and fight you. He's 62 years old or whatever he is. But I still think there's kind of a, a scary element to Rick Tockett that I wouldn't want to get on his bad side. And something tells me that JT Miller recognizes that as well. So, you know, under Tockett, he, he picked up the defensive side of his game didn't cost him a lot of offense and gets four points on opening night, but doesn't get any points in the second game of the season. And yet the Canucks win both of them. And, you know, the two points from those two games are equal in the standings. And so I think JT Miller and others can look and they, they don't need to score eight goals every night. They're not going to score eight goals every night, but they can do a lot of those, you know, little things that contribute to victories. And it is part of those habits that talk it preaches and the, you know, that brings us back to sustainability is just, you know, putting your best foot forward night after night after night, controlling the things you can control. And that's going to be an ongoing watch with JT Miller. Can he keep those emotions in check and sort of channel them so that they bring out the best in his game? I tell you what, if you get a two on one, that might be why they brought in Adam Foote. Like if talking and Adam Foote go out of player, I'm, I'm taking that oh. over any of them. But uh, even at their age, Jeff, um, I wanted to ask a little bit about just the vibe that's going on with this team right now um, from Abbotsford to Sweden, to the NCAA, to the NHL, everything's going good, maybe too good a little bit here. And quads is singing off the top of every show this week. I don't know what's going on. He was in Edmonton flaunting around everywhere about the Canucks and, you know, cup contender Oilers never heard of him. All these type of things. He's got a bottle of crown every time he comes into the show. Now I'm checking on him. He's all right. But You've been covering this team for over 20 years. How do you have a vibe check here on this Vancouver Canucks and how they started the season? Yeah, it just feels like we're living in a world of sprinkled donuts, man. Um, <laughs> it is, uh, and colorful ones at that. Uh, it, 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 look, I think it's more just the de this dark decade that we've all come through, uh, whether you're a player, whether you're ownership management or 
uh, you know, fans and media, everybody comes at the game differently, but the results are what the results are. And this last decade have just been a disaster for the Vancouver Canucks. And so even though it's just two games out of the gate, uh, it's fun. Like, you know, just talking to friends of mine that are Canuck fans at sort of varying levels, uh, you know, the hardcores, they see a lot of things that they like. The casuals just like the fact that they're 2-0 and that Brock Besser scored four goals on opening night. But yeah, I mean, at every turn, and you're right, like to see what Abbotsford did on the weekend and to see a Lekaramaki having the success that he's having in others. Uh, and, you know, I noted uh, on Twitter that, like, the Canucks opened the season with four wins at the AHL and NHL level with four different goaltenders as well. Like, you know, you're not going to find that very often uh, in any uh, professional organization, but everybody's getting an opportunity and everybody's making the most of it. And coaches love those kinds of decisions where everybody's vying for ice time or the net. And, you know, you can't go wrong when you make decisions because the uh, guys are, are holding up their end of the bargain. So yeah, long season ahead, news flash, they're going to lose a game or two somewhere along the line, but it is, I mean, it just, it beats the alternative and we lived it last year when they were 0 and 7 and it truly did feel like the, the sky was falling that for them to, not just win their first two games, but to beat Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl and the Edmonton Oilers and that power play in their first two games, you know, just a sort of added boost to the Canucks. So job well done. And I love the fact that Tockett was cracking the whip at practice in Philadelphia on Monday. Like he doesn't want these guys to uh, let up at all that, you know, it's only going to get tougher from here, even though it's only game three of the season, but uh, a lot to like from what we've seen, uh, whether it's the stars on opening night or the depth guys, in game number two, uh, you know, it's hard to find somebody that hasn't contributed yet to, to either of these two victories. Jeff, just before we let you go here, game's in about an hour. Who's your guy who you need some, to do something? Like, who do you want to see more from for the rest of this Do trip? something, Jeff! Yeah, I'm going to go off the board a little bit, just because it's probably not a name that people have mentioned here recently. In fact, it's been awfully quiet around him from training camp through the preseason. First couple of games here, Anthony Beauvillier. Still plays mm -hmm. for the Vancouver Canucks, <laughs> but no points in the first couple of games. Just two shots on goal in these first couple of games, playing lower in the lineup than he did after the trade. But this guy has absolutely feasted on the Philadelphia Flyers in his NHL career. Of course, most of his time spent with the Islanders. He has 12 goals in 26 games against mm -hmm. the Philadelphia Flyers career, including two as a Canuck last year after the trade, the night that Pedersen had five points, Bavillier had a couple of goals then. Uh, I think he scored five goals on 15 shots on Carter Hart in his career. So something about orange and yellow and black that uh, seems to bring out the best in Anthony Bavillier. It has been remarkably quiet around him. And so, you know, I'm not asking a lot here. The, the, the segment isn't, who do you need to do a lot? It's, yeah. who do you need to do something? <laughs> Uh, Anthony Beauvillier is my my do something guy tonight. Excellent stuff, Jeff. Great dig there on the uh, the production against Philly. That's going to be great. Three o'clock start. Yeah, like we said, we are one hour away right now. So, Jeff, thank you very much for doing this. We'll uh, I think we'll chat again next Tuesday with you. Thanks uh, so much. Go enjoy a donut or two. <laughs> Sounds good, guys. <laughs> there he is, Jeff Patterson from Rink Wide, and they'll have the post game show all set up after the game as well. Be sure to check that. Like last year, I don't miss. I didn't miss a game of the ring wide show. <laughs> say, last year, I didn't really miss Jeff. Well, I miss Jeff all the time. Yeah, I know. Good, good well, you said that, though. Uh, no, but I didn't miss an episode of ring wide last That's year. Awesome. And Jeff's keeping it rolling. And uh, rumor on the street is he's got a good looking co host coming in there on the 21st as well. All right. We'll see about that. Okay. Uh, you've got some business to take care of here. We're not going to preview the game too much more. Like, oh. Well, what? Do you want to preview the game? It starts in an hour. This is going to be so dated. Oh, we got 100 plus people on the YouTube. They, okay. They're in here. Okay, Let's sure. Go. Let me go. I, I took a go whole ahead. bunch of notes because before they had the trade, we we're going to do a full segment here. Uh, and we got some Canucks news. You can pull that up right now on your phone. Um, so the Vancouver Canucks riding a high pair of wins, obviously, against the Oilers. Let's take a look at the Flyers lines real quick. Uh, we do have these up here. Oh, geez. That's too small. My bad. Get that. Get that out of here, Aaron. My bad. <laughs> uh, Travis Konechny, he's one to watch. He's got three goals and one assist through their first two games. They're one and one on the season. Travis Sanheim, the right shot the defenseman there, or left shot defenseman there, Sanheim, uh, he's averaging over 25 minutes a night. He's their big minute muncher. Their top power play unit quads, could you name it? No, you couldn't. Tyson Forrester, uh, Sean Couturier, Cam Atkinson, who I feel like Cam Atkinson's been around since uh, NHL 2002. You don't give a damn. Travis Konechny and Cam York as well. Uh, that's their first power play unit. And Carter Hart, 
We'll see if he gets his third start of the season. He's had a pretty, he's had an up and down start as it kind of feels like it is every year with Carter Hart. He's got a 3.53 goals against average and under 900 save percentage through his two starts this season, but they have had two days off. Same as the Vancouver Canucks. They played on Saturday. They lost five to two against the Ottawa Senators. And what did they do in that game quads? I don't know. They gave up three power play goals against on five attempts. So the Canucks, Good power play unit. You want to take advantage of that. Can Flyers, the power now? play, they've been bad. One of nine on the season. What do you got? Okay. GM Patrick Alvin announced today that Guillaume Breezeball, poor one out for Aaron, has been placed oh. on LTIR. Jack Stanika's emergency conditions have been terminated and he remains on regular recall. So, uh, talk it spoke this morning ahead of today's game, this afternoon's game, whatever you want to call it. Um, he spoke about how Breezeball's injury was sustained after getting hit by Brandon Tanev in the game against Seattle. Right. Um, and he hasn't skated yet. So yeah, uh, Guillaume Breezeball on LTIR. Okay, yeah. anything else from the game? We got a lot of business to take care of no, here before we get you. out of here. Gotta, we got to get out of here. Let's go. You don't listen to anything I say on the show. I just Let's go. Everything on the show. Everyone move it. Move it along. Game. Poll question. We already did the poll question. That's what I'm saying. I, this is why you got to get, you got to read, at least read the prep I do. I read it. I was up 7.47 Oh my gosh, today. here we go. Okay, 7.47 Aaron, Aaron, from 7.47 all the way up until about 10.55. Okay, okay. All I was doing. Okay. And yeah, I went to Costco this morning and I had a hot dog and a piece of pizza, but that was just. <laughs> that was my break. That was my break. I had to go down. I got a Polish that was your dog. breakfast, Polish dog. And you know what? Breath hasn't been that bad today, actually, which has been good. I like, like that we sit as soon as you have a Polish. Yeah. Okay. Uh, our poll question was through two I games. I used to have a Polish dog. Like, it would be our hangover thing. And, <laughs> you know, good luck keeping your stomach straight. Okay. Through two games, right. what feels the most sustainable structure, goaltending, and goal scoring? And as always, I'm angry. I'm not going to go through the results again because they haven't changed. But everybody loves what structure. are you going with here? Because J-Pat poo-pooed on the structure idea. He said everybody said wrong. it was goaltending. And I have to agree with them. I don't know. I don't know if I'm poo-pooing on the structure. I think the structure was fine. Mm. Someone in the YouTube live chat pointed out that they were shorthanded a lot. Of course, they were chasing the game. Sure. I thought their effort was really good. Um, that's not really on here, but I thought their effort was really good. And yeah, I thought the goaltending is the most sustainable thing of what we've seen. Cause I, like I said on the last show, the structure, the effort, it might slip at times. Uh, I just don't know if that's going to happen to the goaltending. Yeah. And you know what? I was a little curious about the preseason and the goal scoring worried me quite a bit. Got 12 goals through two games played against a pretty, uh, pretty weak Oilers team, Aaron, <laughs> they whooped them. Um, but I think the goal scoring is going to be there. And if you can get a little bit of an extra goal scoring boost from the depth on this team, which we saw on Saturday as we were having a blast down there at Greta, if you can get a boost from that bottom six to kind of help the scoring needs a little bit, the top six guys are going to score, right? Like, you know, have we seen Andre Kizmenko be great so far? Scored the first goal on Saturday, right? But didn't really see a time. I haven't seen the explosiveness that we saw at times last year. He's going to get on a streak here. JT Miller is going to get going like, I think I think I'm going with goal scoring, which I think has the f the lowest amount of votes, right? Like I think that's the one yeah. that's picking up the least amount. I, I think I'm I'm <clears throat> feeling more confident about goal scoring here with this team. I think still in the end, really, eh? I, I don't think the players that are on this roster, their strength is structure. I think they're at they're going to get to the point where goal scoring becomes their strength. As good as this team wants to be defensively, and I love that they're paying attention to it. I think deep down, this Vancouver Canucks team. They got some damn goal scorers on their team. They got multiple guys that could be 100-plus players. They got a guy who could be in the conversation for the Norris with the amount of points he's going to put up this year. I think the strength of this team and what is going to be most sustainable throughout the season is goal scoring. ESPN had Seth Jones ranked higher than Quinn Hughes. Did you see this? I don't know. These This, this is exactly why they do this. It's so that you bring up I their articles I mentioned it for a show. split second. Don't go read it. I'm just saying. Anyways. Because they, um, they, they know what they're doing, man. All those sites, same thing. But, but, Quinn Hughes is the they'll you know they'll put up a post top 100 players uh, that play defense this year they'll put Quinn Hughes at you know 74 and they'll okay like, discuss let's get to our anyone else I got uh, you do the read I got a few here that I'm lining up Please all right ahead. anyone else presented by the great folks uh, at DoorDash this is where y'all come in with the uh, the questions or anything else that we didn't touch on during the show we're gonna do this after at the end of every show we're gonna do this at the end because there's a lot of things we miss and sometimes we don't look at the chat for 10 minutes you're scrolling through right now to get some old ones. Uh, maybe if you just want to like put like an AE and then like, a, what do you, what do you call the, is it a colon? Yes. Is that part of the body or is that, uh, both Chris, 
But people have been putting anyone else, which is great. And right. I've got a few. Okay. Well, Finish hey, your read. Finish your read. Go right ahead. at the end of your colon there, you can punch out a A and E colon. Um, okay, let's go. Get the read. DoorDash. DoorDash. Uh, all right. Ordering is easy. Just open the DoorDash app. Choose what you want from where you want. And your items will be left safely outside your door with their default contactless delivery settings. I don't ever use, I don't ever answer the door with these uh, DoorDash folks. They're all good folks, but I don't answer the door anymore with them. I just let them... They put the bag right at your door. You don't, you know, no face to face, no talking. Then they don't have to judge me, and they see that it's two in the morning, and I've got, uh, you know, burgers and fries coming to me, and I just had a night out at uh, the casino having a few crowned and uh, gingers. Like I just, I don't want to have to have a conversation about what's going on in my life at that point. You just hit them with DoorDash there, uh, and if it's the first time you, used it, okay, okay. I, it's, no, it's the first time you, used it, I'm not gonna like that one. Uh, if the first time you used DoorDash. Uh, for a limited time, our listeners can get 25% off and zero delivery fees on their first order of $15 or more when you download the DoorDash app and use promo code NATION25, which is getting taken away from us, maybe. All capital letters, NATION25, that's 25% off, uh, up to $10 value, and no delivery fees the first time you use the app. Okay, okay. so this one is from Oznuck. Said, anyone else concerned about the amount of diving happening in the league? Kachuk, et cetera. I'd really hate to see the worst part of soccer infect the game. I just want to point this out. The let's reason I'm the, bringing let's this get the one graphic up, up there too. The anyone else uh, graphic? Yeah, we got an anyone else graphic. We do got an anyone else. Graphic. Uh, the reason that I wanted to bring this one up from Osnuck, I hope that's how you want to want me to say your name. Mm. The reason I bring that up is because I don't know if you saw there was a penalty in Edmonton where Elias Pedersen started doing his wave at the referee to be like, "No, no, I went down too easy." Right, like, right, right. Pedersen doing the reverse dive, like he got the call and he like waves to the ref to try to be like, "No, no." I was off balance and I went down too easy. There was right. one of those in Edmonton. Also, then Darnell Nurse slew foots him. Just anyways, people have already pointed out how dirty the Oilers play, uh, especially when they're losing and getting frustrated. So we won't uh, revisit that. But tell your boys to chill, Aaron. Um, <laughs> Aaron's just catching so many strays lately. Here's one from Karan. That's a good one. Think Garland is going to stick on the top line when Mickey is back. Talking about Mikheyev. He's been good with Pedersen. Yeah. The, the numbers have, have shown well. I just think that Mikheyev's going to get that spot when he comes back here. I, I really think that Garland, though I didn't really agree with a lot of people thinking this is just a showcase, this is a spot to showcase what he can do maybe on some other team's top six. I think in the end, the way the Canucks are going to have their best lineup is him fitting in on the third line and being a guy that can, you know, spin himself like a damn Beyblade as much as he wants in the corner there and, and then do that with the third line, create a little bit of offense that way. This one from Kurt Richardson. Mm. Arshdeep Baines or Pod Colson once Garland gets traded? Who gets their chance? Ooh. I think it comes down to what role you need filled. No. And honestly, no, I think it comes down to developing Pod Colson. Leave him saying. down yep. there. Okay, perfect. We agree. No, I'm saying I bet uh, if, you, if they needed a winger right now, it's Arshdeep Baines, baby. That's mm -hmm. who's coming up. Mm -hmm. That's who's coming up and playing. He is looking good. And the step that he has added in the offseason. Holy moly. The goal he scored, the primary assist that he had, one of the three primary assists over the weekend. Check it all out in the Blackfish Report, by the way. That's out there right now in Canucks Army. I wrote almost 3,000 words. I got you in my ear last night. Oh, we're going to cut it up into four different articles so we can get the, the article counts up. I don't give a damn about all that. Big old uh, Blackfish article on Canucks Army. Read it. I keep it. forgetting to say ding dong every time I say door. I know Lisa's got me there. I'm going to get gotta to get working on I'm that. I'm going to get back on that. Okay. So. But this has been anyone else brought to you by DoorDash. Ding dong. There you go. Beautiful. Okay. Uh, we'll just get to Betway now. No, no, no. Okay. You've been on it the whole game here. You're back. You oh, got the, corner. Right, the crown corner. Crown corner. It's time for our segment that we're going to do once a week. We'll see. We're going to workshop this one a little bit as well. I mean, we're, this is all new and fresh. We got a lot of new sponsors I'm not right gonna, now. I'm, I know I'm going to hear from somebody about the reads, but I'm going to try my best. All right. Our segment here is called The Generous Guy. Because generosity lives in the small things, and Crown Royal crowns everything. Crown Corner. So we've got to pick our player that we think. Is that it? That's, that's all you uh, That's their saying. Uh, generosity lives in the small things. Crown Royal. Oh. So our generous guy of the week, we got to pick somebody that we thought was generous. And that's the thing. I don't know if you get a lot of that. In oh, that's right. Not. Yeah. Brought to you by Crown Royal. I, I have my Crown generous Royal. guy hey, of the week. Listen, love a good uh, crown. Crown on the rocks. Okay, you go first. We'll, we'll, have, we'll have our crown. So soon. I picked my guy here. Uh, yeah. Who do I think has been the most generous player this week for the Vancouver Canucks? I was going to say he's a name that doesn't get brought up a lot, but I actually think his name has been brought up quite a bit. 
Ian Cole. So I'm going to go with Ian Cole as my generous guy this week. He was third on the team in average ice time through the first two games. You know how much? You know how many minutes Cole averaged over the first two game squads? No. 23 minutes and 24 seconds. So he's eaten up a lot of ice time. A lot of that ice time is being eaten up shorthanded. He's mm-hmm. leading the Vancouver Canucks with shorthanded ice time. Seven minutes and 51 seconds through the first two games. He's also leading the Vancouver Canucks in blocked shots with eight block shots through two games, and he's only got one shot on net, so he's a generous guy. He's passing off, but here's the stat that blows me away, and it's going to blow you away because it doesn't sound like it's even possible. Ian Cole, great guy in the room, right? Right? Yeah, yeah. For the right. podcast listeners, agree with me. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Great guy in the room. Ian Cole has been on 12 playoff teams in the past nine seasons. He's been on nine. He's been on. He's been to the playoffs the last nine seasons himself, but every team that he's been on in those 12 teams that he's been on in the last uh, nine seasons, he's been traded a couple times. All of them have gone to the playoffs. So like we, we heard him when he was His on with Frank Sarah Valley. It was a nine going. season playoff streak. It's 12 teams throughout yeah. that nine year stretch. Like it's crazy how many teams he's been on that have been to the playoffs. I really think this guy brings a lot to the room and he's going to do those little things, right? He's going to do those little things and be a generous guy. Okay. I've got two generous guys. A lot of people in the chat jumping in saying, Petey, five assists. Hey, Quinn Hughes talks so much love about his teammates. I've got two generous guys, and they are Stuart Skinner and Jack Campbell with their dueling 750 it, save in, percentages. <laughs> the most generous guys in Vancouver Canucks land Whoa. this past week have been the Edmonton Oilers goaltenders. Aaron, your thoughts. <laughs> What did I do to you? What did I what what did I do to deserve this? I'm getting it from all angles. I'm getting it on Twitter. I'm getting it in the chat. The Leafs guys are all over me. Quads, the guy I thought was in my corner on Friday, he's here in the Edmonton office. He said, people, I'm gonna sue him. He said, I'm not a Canucks fan. And then he goes out and completely switches his tune yesterday. Now he's all fired up again, being generous to my generous goalies. He's been in the corner the whole uh, the whole morning here. <laughs> that guy's been dipping in. Get that Crown Royal bottle away from him right now, favor. I think the Crown corner's got to go in my corner because I you can trust me a little bit more. What we need is we need like, uh, and we'll, maybe we have to work on this. We need Aaron in like the top little corner of Quads Cam just to like get the Aaron reactions to just like hands thrown up, you know, what's going on, hands on the forehead. That came from left field right there. You're playing the Flyers in an hour and you're still talking Jack Campbell and Stuart Skinner. I'm just sitting back here and I'm like, what? That's it. I got to go defend myself. (laughs) All right. Uh, Like I said, a little bit of a pregame show here. We got the Canucks uh, getting going at three o'clock. I I hope that everyone is like, we got 100, 130 plus people in the chat here. So thank you to everyone who's tuning in. Hopefully these people are also able to watch the game because I know people work in the nine fives, right? Uh, they're not going to be able to get home in time for this thing. Uh, so hopefully everybody get a chance to watch tonight's game. Man, I just, you look at the way this Canucks team is playing, and I think that I really liked seeing that tweet from Thomas Durant the other day about, uh, you know, the guys having to earn some ice. And Rick Toggett screaming at his players, dropping F-bombs, which you know I don't do. You did yesterday on the, on the show. You swore yesterday on the show. The poor kids in the back seat, they're yelling at their parents. Now they're yelling words that they're learning from you. So I don't know about that. Uh, but you got to keep earning it. Right. And I think this is the opportunity. Like we've seen the Canucks have really good. And this is something that we've seen. I feel like over the last 10 years where they step up real big against good teams and then have that letdown game. (laughs) This has to be the difference, right? This year has to be the difference of follow it up, beat the crap out of these batter, these worst teams, batter teams, Uh, these worst teams, like beat the flyers. You need to beat the flyers. You have a much better team than the flyers. Mm -hmm. And you got Thatcher Demko. Going back in net tonight, getting some time off. You know, he's probably been a couple of Tums, right? You put down a couple of those, get him out there on the ice. He's going to be all right. You got your starter. You got a good lineup. You got a lineup that you feel is better than the other team's lineup. And you should win this game. I know the time's going to mix you up a little bit, but you're on a road trip. Like, keep yep. the good vibes going. Like, that, you're setting yourself up to really build some momentum here. Three in a row would be huge for the Canucks, and I think they should be expected to win tonight against the Flyers. <clears throat> Canucks have that back to back. Yeah, St. we got the Louis schedule up here. York. Let's get the schedule up. Get it up. I'm just saying, the 27th, 28th of October, they have the back to back. I originally read that as it was they were in St. Louis, and then the day after they played in Vancouver against the Rangers. I was oh, like, no, no, that's no. crazy, but no, it's at home. A couple of home games back to back. A couple home games. Uh, hey, they the got undefeated. a Halloween game this year. 
I like Halloween games at Rogers. It's at Rogers Arena too. Do they really? At yeah, 31st of October there against Nashville Predators. All right, I'm taking that's that. That's fun. Off. Yeah, you're you're gonna you gotta go trick or treat. Yeah, I gotta no, exactly. I gotta go trick or treat. Yeah, no, I go. Bring one of my bags up here. Yeah. Okay. Fill uh, up that bag. All right, Betway, let's go. Let's go. Betway, Betway, Betway. We got a good one today. Uh Betway, bet of the day, bet the responsible way. Must be 19 plus to play. Good folks over there at Betway. Here we go. We got JT Miller. To pick up two or more points in the game and the total goals between the two teams being over six point five, it's it's that part of the season quads. And I said this last week with the uh, with the Abbotsford bet, like the overs being hit hard. Okay, the teams haven't really locked in their structure at this point. Aside from the Vancouver Canucks, you can ask Aaron about that. But over six point five total goals, I'm taking that in this game. And the JT Miller to put up two or more points had a quieter night offensively. Oh, geez, poor Aaron. There he is. <laughs> uh, had a quieter night offensively on Saturday, but I think he's going to bounce back with a couple points. I think that because Philadelphia has a pretty weak penalty kill to start the season, I think you're going to see a couple power play goals for the Vancouver Canucks. And when you see a power play goal for the Vancouver Canucks, one of the things you always see on the list to go with it, a JT Miller assist or a goal. So I'm going to say he gets two plus points tonight, and I do think we'll see the over of 6.5 total goals. Over on Betway, 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 $10 bet. That will return you 40. You got plus 300 on that bet. $10 return. Put the 10 down, you get your 40. Uh, something else happens, and then you, you can use the 40 bucks. There you go. Okay. Betway. Bet the responsible way. Must be 19 plus to play. Beautiful. Okay. We'll close How, it out I, there. I, I, want, I hope people... I hope people like this. We're working our way through the segments. We're yeah, we've, we've some got things. a lot of I do new like sponsors. the anyone else. I think the anyone else is nice because I feel like at the end of the show, the YouTube chat is like engaged. It, no, I wouldn't say engaged. I think they're they're leaning off, but we have the most amount of viewers at the end of the show, I find. Okay. So I think like anyone else, you throw yep. the graphic up. Let's see it, Aaron. The graphic, uh, anyone worked so hard on this thing. This thing's beautiful. I put this together. Uh, you roll this thing out, it's bouncing around all over the place, and then we start getting some comments coming in. Right, you get a couple comments here. Anyone out? Look at this thing; it's bouncing around up and down. I did that all by myself, handmade. Drew it did all. Did you? Yeah, I just. Uh, I, I got, couldn't tell. No, I had the this one. I had my highlight, both my highlights. Okay, okay. And I was just bada bing, bada boom. I'm not even gonna make it in time to watch the game, like many fans out there. Oh, uh, so thank you to everybody who tuned in today. And yes, like you said, a lot of new sponsors right now. And poor we're working Aaron our way there, through. Yeah. It. Um, how we're going to feel for Aaron. at least at least the chats on Aaron, Aaron's so. got a lot going on. Hey, uh, they, you know, the Oilers are going to be back, baby, and we're going to get it. And, you know, Aaron can get going on the Oilers here. He's got a pregame show to get to today. as yep, well. We got to wrap it up. OK, for my co-host, Chris Faber, and our technical producer, Aaron Bordado, our thanks again to Jeff Patterson. J. Pat for joining us tomorrow. Frank Sarah Valley and tomorrow, earlier show Valley. tomorrow. And Harmon Harmon guesting with yes, Harmon. Guest yeah, I'm out tomorrow. That's right. Uh, my name is Dave Woodjelly. Thank you so much for listening to the episode of the Canucks conversation see you you won't find any grand gestures or flashy displays of generosity here million dollar donations or names on a hospital ring that's not the only way generosity lives it doesn't need money or an audience or even acknowledgement it just needs good people to be good to people there's no one way to be generous there are endless ways and there's a crown for every one of them. Canucks Conversation with Quads and Faber. New episodes every weekday, 1.30 across the board, except for Wednesdays, 1 o'clock. We'll see you there live on the Canucks Army YouTube channel. For more information, visit CanucksArmy.com. How about keep it to a thank you, Jim? <laughs>